welcome to our Ray Talk, and Sandra will be talking from her new book, Outside the Box with Babaji. Yeah, so the way I got this book was uh, during the pandemic, I started doing mantra breathing. I would breathe to these mantras for an, over an hour, maybe two hours, once a week. And then I asked Babaji to come and join me, and during that time uh, he was there, I had some cards on the side and I would jot down, you know, what I heard. And so I'm just going to read to you today some of the parts from that book, and uh, I've been doing that. I guess I'm in the middle of it now. Uh, but I just want to share what I've been going through in my process for liberation breathing. Marcus and I did a five-day intensive training breath workers, and this particular training was so deep Bob, she took us right down to the bottom line, which was actual thoughts during the delivery. <laughs> they were pretty heavy. And uh, okay, I went, I went to my thought of conception, my thought of prenatal period, my thought at birth, and my thought postpartum, and they were quite shocking. I never knew I had those thoughts, and they were suppressed. And they, so my life is really changing by clearing those thoughts. My cranium has been really stuck, and Marcus had headaches. So we both went through the birth canal. And uh, so I don't know. Maybe it's lookout world. We'll see what happens after this. We're coming out, and at least we came out alive. So that's what we've been processing the last month. And, uh, yeah, so the other good news is that I'm ready to finish this book. It's called Outside the Box with Babaji. And uh, last night I actually finished the first draft, so I'm in a really upbeat mood about that, and I was so excited I almost flipped out. <laughs> because I got so high writing this book, and so typing it all out and checking it was just really exciting for me yesterday. Yeah, we could start if you all lie down. Now, those of you that are not regular with us, if it's your fi first time doing liberation breathing, the way we breathe is in a circle. You pull on the inhale, relax on the exhale, and there's no holding at the top and no holding at the bottom. So you keep the energy moving. And uh, if you're new, it, I would breathe in and out through your nose. It's more gentle. So if this is the first time you've done liberation breathing, I would do it that way. And you know, by the way, we are available for private sessions. That's what we're really good at, and we can crack any case on any subject. So uh, let us know if you need that kind of support. Okay, I'm gonna start with what I got about letting go. Uh, Marcus actually gave me a very moving story about his master, his teacher, Tara Singh. Tara Singh had a master named Krishnamurti, you've probably heard about him. So Tara Singh went to Krishnamurti and said, does life take care? In other words, will you be taken care of completely by life? And uh, Krishnamurti answered this, yes, if you completely let go. I keep thinking about that story. So what does that mean to completely let go? How does one do that? You start with the willingness. I am willing to let go completely. And of course, Krishnamurti added, and you can't be lazy. <laughs> you can't be lazy, but you can let go and everything will come to you. So we are letting go, and you should start breathing. Some of you are not lying down. Can you all start breathing, lying down, please? So everybody should be lying down while I'm reading this. And if you're new, breathe in and out through your nose, circular connected breathing with no pausing. And if you're um, a pro at this, you can breathe through your mouth. Some of you just came on, please lie down. And if you're new, breathe in and out through your nose with no pausing at the top or the bottom. Otherwise, if you're a pro, breathe in and out through your mouth. So I'll start again because a bunch of people just came. <laughs> okay, um, I was telling this moving story. Uh, Marcus told me about his teacher, Tara Singh, and, he, and Tara Singh had a teacher named Krishnamurti. You have probably heard of him. So Tara Singh asked Krishnamurti, does life take care? And will you actually be taken care of? And Krishnamurti's answer was this, yes, if you completely let go. So how does one let go? That's what we're going to talk about. And you start with the willingness. I am willing to let go completely. That means you're going to let go of your ego and let God rush in. When we let go, we allow God to take over. You know. So I like to say, you know, divine mother, please take over my life. Uh, then I got this prayer 
to help you let go is I'm one with the Christ. Christ is taking over my whole life and I'm letting go. Christ taking over my relationships. Or you can say Babaji or Amaji. The Divine Mother is taking over my relationships. The Divine Mother is taking over my whole body. So I'll say that. Or you could say the dream team. The dream team consists of Divine Mother, Babaji, and Jesus of the Course in Miracles. So the dream team is taking over my relationships. The dream team is taking over my affairs. The dream team is taking over my whole body. Now, that is letting go, if you let that happen. Letting go completely is actually fun. But people don't believe that. The ego tries to tell you it's hard, unpleasant, or you can't do it. And the ego does not want you to let go because what you're doing is letting go of it. <laughs> and again, the ego is all your negative thoughts that keep you from remembering you're one with God. And it starts with the belief in separation. All your guilt, all your fear, all your anger, that's the ego. We have to be more interested in letting go totally than we are in any condition we have. We have to say that we're no longer interested in this condition. We're not going to let it occupy our minds. So when I say condition, I mean a problem in your body. Okay, this is where we really need to let go. What people are doing is they're holding on to a fear. And this causes the problem in your body. I don't care if it's a tension, a pain, or an actual illness. It's all caused by fear. And the thing is, you don't feel the fear because it's coming out in the form of a symptom. That's why you don't even know it's fear. But there's only love or fear. So sickness and so on would never be in the category of love. So everything that's not love it has to be fear. Now, I don't think I'm a scared person, but I didn't, I was never very fearful of anything as a kid. Well, now as an adult, I see a lot of fears that were suppressed I didn't even know I had. And some of them came right from my birth trauma. When you have a condition in your body, symptom, tension, pain, or uh, symptom or disease, you have to work on the fear that's stuck there. What is the fear I'm holding on to? <laughs> this is really important. <clears throat> so what would letting go totally be like? It's not something shocking. You know, the ego tells you that would be too big of a shock. It suddenly you will feel good. That's what happens. When you let go totally, you're going to suddenly feel really good. Now, how about letting people go in your life when someone withdraws from our life, we should simply just let go and say, sending you tons of love. Why fret? I mean, we've had some people we were close to just quit this work and leave. No more breath work, no more Course in Miracles. They just leave and they leave our life and we're kind of shocked and it's been, you know, hard for us to handle that. But you just have to let go. They're not ready to go all the way. So, okay, give them space. Why fret? Something better is coming. New people will come. The reason it's so hard to let go of a condition in the body is because there's so much ego involved. It's where you're holding the ego, okay? The ego is fear. You know, the more complicated the disease, the stronger the ego. Now, when you cut your finger, not much so ego is involved, so it heals really fast. But for complicated diseases where you get tumors and all that stuff, you had to really be indulging in ego thoughts to create that. Okay, so letting go is going to feel good. Let's say an incident happens that's shocking to you or you don't like. How fast can you let it go? You know, it's, it's dropping it. <laughs> I remember once early as a rebirther, I had one fit of jealousy because some other re female rebirther kind of flirted and come and came on to my boyfriend. I was really upset about this. <laughs> and I, I wasn't ready to see how I attracted that. But I, I called up Leonard and I said, you won't believe what so-and-so did and blah, 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 blah. And I was going on and on and on. So at the end he said, drop it, Sandra, and get back to work. And he hung up the phone. And that was it. I thought, I can't believe it. Is that all he's going to say? And then I looked at my mind and I thought, well, 
you called him, didn't, are you going to take his advice or not? What if you could drop it? <laughs> so I just did. It was a choice. And ever since then, I've learned to drop things fast. That's letting go. Why do you want to hang on to something that's unpleasant? If you do, it puts you in a very low frequency. If you're hanging on to unpleasant thoughts or unpleasant memories or incidents, uh, it's going to put you in a very low frequency and you're not going to feel good. So how quickly can we let go of something? This is why we need liberation breathing. That's the purpose of this breathing is you let go on the exhale. So I want you to keep doing that right now. What is it you need to let go of today? Is it guilt? Is it fear? Is it anger? Is it a thought? What I need to let go of right now is, and you start imagining it going out on the exhale. Now, that doesn't mean you can't express your feelings about a situation also. That's always good. Express your feelings about any upset and let it go. And it's good to write a letter. You know, I write to Babaji all the time. I express everything to him. I always have since the moment I left his side. And I used to send these letters to India. <laughs> I didn't even care if he read them. I just needed to share it with my master, right? And I wrote all my traumas. And, you know, I said to somebody one time, well, does he, who was there, I said, does he read these? He said, oh, no, just passes his hand over the envelope. He knows everything. And then he would send me some comments at times. Well, then I thought, wow, okay. I'm, I, <laughs> that next year, he started opening the letters. So I thought, I better get beautiful cards. So I would spend hours picking out the most gorgeous cards I could find. And I would write all my stuff to him and send it. And then he would open it up, rip off the art, and give it to the peasants to decorate their part, their little huts. And people said, Sandra, your letters are floating all down the Harakon River. <laughs> so your words are floating down the Harakon River. So that I like to express myself so it's not stuck in my body, but I like to not dump it all on Marcus. I like to, I, I, I give it to the dream team. I recommend you do that. That's letting go. So, you know, what helps you also let go if you're into a grievance or an upset about something, remembering that you created the situation with your mind and you can make amends about it to yourself and others and then you can let it go. Instead of blaming their part, you just handle your part. We shouldn't really let anything get us down. We shouldn't really worry about anything. So can you imagine a life where you're not getting down and we're not worrying about anything. You know, worry is another form of fear. So what are you the most worried about right now in your life, you know? A lot of people worry about, I'm gonna get a terrible disease I can't cure. And that thought helps create it, you see. Worrying about something creates it happening. That's what people don't get. Worrying about something creates it happening because you're dwelling on it. <laughs> so. You know, a lot of people tell me, oh, my mother was worried all the time, <laughs> or my mother was in total fear all the time. Yeah, I guess I was lucky because my mother was not like that, and she always had the highest thought, and she knew I would be fine and let me roam all around, and she trusted me, so I acted like she wanted me to act because of her thought, you know? Okay, now what about completing a relationship or letting it go? Now, that could be hard for people. But ultimately, if you are leaving a relationship, it wasn't supposed to be there. Or if they left you or you left them, doesn't matter. It wasn't good for you or you would be, you know, it would be staying there. So maybe letting go of a relationship is a cause for celebration instead of, you know, regret or guilt. You know, you want to let go of any guilt or any, because guilt always demands punishment. So why do you want to... Fear of the future could be a problem. Uh, but what if you're completing a whole pattern in this relationship and you, by letting it go, you're done with the pattern, so that should be a cause for celebration. Or what if you finally divorced yourself from your mother or father, because most of your relationships were set up to be your mother and father. So maybe that's a cause for celebration. I'm no longer marrying my mother or my father, right? <laughs> so it's a success to end a pattern, and sometimes that means leaving a relationship. So some people, you know, they can't let go of the relationship. I know people that are still pining over a lover they had three years ago. 
And that's a way of misery. And then you'll never create a new one with that because your mind is cluttered. There's no space for the new one to come if you haven't let go of the old relationship, the old person. So hanging on to the past doesn't work. Letting go means I'm giving up my past. The past is over. It can touch me not, it says in the Course in Miracles. So that helps you let go of that lesson. And I know some people that beat themselves up in their next relationship because they failed in the last one. So they think they're a failure and they carry all the drama from the last one into the next one. Uh, so they never really let go of the past marriage. You know, like we know some people like that. So you want to say, if you have a pattern that you're hanging on to and you want to give it up today, just say X, whatever it is, is over. I don't need to revisit that issue anymore. I'm done with that past issue. Now there's a necessity also to let go of church dogma. Um, if you've left this, your church and you're on a spiritual path, good, but it's recommended that you clear your false religious theology. That's what the Course in Miracles is for. It's a correction of religion. You know, I was totally stuck in the Lutheran church. I couldn't let it go. I was baptized at Sunday school, Bible school, Bible camp, confirmation school, confirmation camp, and a church college, if you can imagine. <laughs> so for me, it was really tough. And then I rebelled against the whole thing and ran away from the church college to go to the University of Florida College of Nursing. And it was liberating. But it still was in my mind and my thoughts and my consciousness, all this church stuff. Um, it also, one, one way to do it is to actually go to the church that you were raised in, sit in the pew and start breathing. <laughs> I, I took five Catholics once to the Catholic church and they were in my class. I told them, I want you to forgive everything that you see. And they went in total spontaneous rebirths. Fortunately, we were in the last pew. <laughs> so uh, recently I said to Marcus, well, last year actually, I said, well, I need to go back to the Lutheran church and forgive everything because I'm not clear. So we did. We went to the Lutheran church. It was so boring. I can't believe it. But then we took communion, and it really helped me. I kind of released some tears and memories, and it felt like a real completion for me. So I actually recommend, if you're stuck in religious dogma, you do that process. Go back to the church uh, kind of type of religion you were raised in and forgive everything, everything. And some people say, well, I can't. Forget the church. I can't leave the church. I'm always a Lutheran. I'm always a Catholic. Because if I leave the church, I'll really be punished. Well, that's how they control you. <laughs> it's, not, it's okay to leave the church dogma and get clear on the Course in Miracles. And you just have to, you know. My mother opened the Course in Miracles. My mother was a very high person. But she opened the Course in Miracles and it said, there is no sin. And she shut the book. And she said, Sandra, this invalidates everything I ever learned in religion. And I <laughs> She couldn't handle it. So, uh, you know, at that point, she was in her 80s when I did that. But, you know, you know the she, she's right. There is no sin. Uh, sin is uh, not, a bit, not there. Not there, according to Jesus. Okay. Letting go of church dogma. That, I think that's enough on that subject. Um, when we have an emotional pattern that's not serving us, Forgive it to let it go. I forgive myself for having this pattern. If you judge yourself on top of it for having the pattern or the thought, it's going to be more stuck. So what most of us do, we see ourselves doing something stupid, a bad habit, or an addiction, or a mistake in our relationships we keep doing, and then we get mad at ourselves, and then we feel guilty, and then we judge ourselves. And then it gets more stuck, the whole pattern. You'll never get over a pattern if you keep judging yourself for having the pattern. So you have to let go of the pattern and let go of any judgment you have about yourself. You don't even have to know how to do it. It's the intention. I'm willing to let go of this pattern. And you give it to the Holy Spirit. That's the real answer for letting go. If you get nothing else out of this lecture today, remember that. Give it to the Holy Spirit if you really want to let it go. And if the Holy Spirit doesn't take it, you're not giving it over. Letting go equals happiness. Don't forget that. And one has to be willing to let go of anything that is not the atonement. Well, what is the atonement? Uh, some people say it's, it's at one -ment. It also means the end of your ego is the atonement, the total forgiveness. 
and the correction of all your wrong thinking. So I used to write on my mirror with lipstick. Uh, <laughs> I, I let go of the atonement. I, I, please take all my wrong thinking. I'm willing to give up all my wrong thinking. All right. Now the problem is a lot of people wait until they're totally fed up before they will let go of a pattern. But the minute you recognize a pattern the first time, try to let it go to the Holy Spirit. Instead of indulging it, oh, there's that pattern, I give it up. This is how you get over addictions. Thoughts can be addictions, patterns can be addictions, emotions can be addictions. You know, some, most people are addicted to anger. And um, that does not work. Okay, well, let's see how we're doing. Yeah, so everybody breathe a little bit. Well, I'm just going to be in silence for a minute. Okay, everyone breathe a little deeper now and we're gonna to try to relax more. I'm talking about achieving relaxation. Relaxation and letting go go together. Obviously, if you let go, you're gonna be relaxed. It's okay to be totally relaxed. See, one would think you would not have to say this, but many people have relaxation associated with being lazy. So they won't let themselves relax because then they're afraid they're going to be lazy. Or they may think they don't deserve to relax. Well, I'm bad, so I don't deserve to be relaxed. I have to punish myself. Yeah, our, you know, our goal is to be relaxed and stay relaxed no matter what's happening. Now, I once uh, was in the <laughs> India and I brought a body worker with me who did body harmony. He was very skilled. And Muni Raj was the guru in residence. And so Don offered to give him a session, which he did. So here's my friend Don giving body harmony on the guru. There was a huge crash where a tree fell on top of the, build, uh, the shack where they were. And everybody went, jumped out of their skin. He said to me, Muni Raj's body didn't even quiver. Didn't even react at all now that is relaxation when you're relaxed and everything's crashing out there and you're still relaxed that's a very high state and that's what we want to get toward you want to get rid of everything that keeps you from being relaxed you can be totally relaxed while you're doing work and that's a very important goal you want to be relaxed and enjoy the work you're doing you should have gratitude that you can do this work and serve people. If you don't like your job, you should either get out of it, get another one, or change your attitude. And Babaji always said, work is worship, idleness is death. And I love that concept that work is worship. If you get that, then you can be relaxed. You're not there to make money or have a hard time or suffer. You're there to offer your service to humanity and work is worship and you're a worshiping God by serving. So if you do that, it's a relaxation and everything you do becomes joyful and joy and relaxation go together. 
Uh, some people think if they relax, something terrible will happen. So they stay uptight and be uh, all the time, and uh, relaxation is not normal. You want to make it normal to be relaxed. So maybe you can think now of something that really relaxes you and do more of that till you get used to in that state, being in that state. And then if you do that thing that relaxes you enough, you get used to the energy, then you transfer that energy to what you're doing when you're not doing that thing. I hope that was clear. So you want to make it normal to be relaxed. And when you're relaxed, you can receive infinite intelligence. When you are stressed out, worried, or uptight, you cannot channel the answers. Infinite intelligence is available to everyone. And if you're relaxed, you will hear it. I'm always connected to infinite intelligence. That's the number one mantra for any beginning breath worker because they have to tap into what to do in a situation. God's voice speaks to us all through the day, and if we allow ourselves to hear it, we'll feel good. Then we can be more relaxed. We can be relaxed in the joy of God. That thought feels good. So we want to be happy and relaxed. That's our goal. We want to be happy and relaxed in our body and get it to the point where we're free of all tension, all conditions, all symptoms. This is possible. If you're stuck in some symptom in your body, you can't get rid of it, you probably need a private session with us. See? Don't keep it and suffer and think you have to put up with it. That's crazy. You don't have to put up with symptoms, conditions in your body. There's a way to process them very fast, and it does involve letting go, but we can show you how to do it. Now, the pandemic made us all nervous. <laughs> so being nervous is fear. I think a lot of fear came up for people. I, I had past life memories come up, different pandemics in ancient times. It freaked me out. We all went through a lot. But what I did to deal with it is every week I would lie down and do mantra breathing for an hour or two sometimes. And then I would breathe out all this tension and worry and fear from the pandemic. And then I would write down what Babaji said. And that's how I got the book that we're talking about here. The presence of Babaji in your life will make you more relaxed. This is one of the great advantages of having a spiritual master and being close to him. I mean, when you have a master, it changes your whole life and all your thought structures and everything, and you feel safe. So that's the point. We want to feel safe. And most people don't. Having a spiritual master, you feel protected and you feel safe. Now that is a huge step in toward relaxation. And when we have this certainty that God takes care of us, we will be safe. You have to have the certainty that you're going to be taken care of. And that, and, and that I told you has to do with letting go and let God in. There's a lesson that says, your presence is with me, Father. I am safe. So we're talking about being safe right now. I think it's lesson 221. And it begins part two of the workbook, and it's very beautiful. 2.45. It is? Sorry, Marcus your said. Your peace is with me, Father. I am safe. Oh, 245. I got the wrong lesson. He's got them all memorized, if you can believe it. So uh, it's very beautiful. It's poetic, and it's prayerful. And, you know, I think you should review that. Your peace is with me, Father. I am safe. That will give you relaxation and safety, that lesson. Okay, well, I'm going to let Marcus talk a while for now. And then we can have sharing at the end, too. Okay. Keep breathing. This breathing is one of the best ways to let go and relax that we have found. That's why we call it liberation breathing. It's liberating you from anxiety, fear, guilt, anger. Above all else, I want to see above all else I want to see things differently. 
So we want to trade in the way we saw before, where we were not peaceful, concerned about things, preoccupied with the past, uncertain of the future, angry about something in the present, well, above all else, we want to see that differently. And that's a letting go. We have to let go of the way we thought before, or even the way we felt before. We have to be willing to what Esther Hicks would call go up the emotional scale. Or David Hawken has a, has a scale of enlightenment. Where are we on that scale? With our feelings, with our being. That's why this, this work is, we call it ascension. We're going up to higher levels of consciousness in ourselves, in our being, letting go more of our ego and being more in our true self as God created us, ending the separation. This is what letting go is about. Think of a light being, a light uh, orb, but it's weighted down with different thoughts, different feelings, different judgments. And the more you let go of those, the lighter you become again, you start to ascend naturally. You don't have to do anything to ascend, but you do have to undo what's keeping you from ascending. Anger, guilt, frustration, fear, judgments, These are all attacks on your true self. Your peace is with me, Father. I am safe. Your peace surrounds me, Father. Where I go, your peace goes there with me. Just breathe into that thought. Your peace is with me, Father. I am safe. And the Divine Mother is your breath. You're using the Divine Mother, your breath, to access and embrace the Divine Father, which is the thought, your peace is with me. Breathe in love, exhale fear. Breathe in the light, exhale the dark. Breathe in the joy, exhale any upset. It's not worth it. Which would you rather have, upset 
or bliss. It's your decision. And we have this simple tool, the simplest tool we could possibly have. Anybody can learn it, do it in five minutes. It's called circular connected breathing. You can use this tool daily. And when you're really stuck and you have something in your mind you have to sort out, it's good to have a session of liberation breathing with a practitioner. They can help you get to the bottom of the thoughts you can't seem to let go of, help you let go. Om Namah Shivai. so many tools available to us to let go and be at peace and feel safe and relax this is our main tool liberation breathing we have other tools the Course in Miracles all the miracles that are the lessons help us to let go, help us to relax, help us to feel safe. Another thing that helps us let go is a mantra. Repeating a mantra isn't just a ritual or a rote activity. You're taking the mantra, the power of that mantra, the power of that vibration, and using that to cleanse your body, cleanse your mind, cleanse your being. And in that cleansing, it's a letting go. Om Namah Shivai. Babaji said that's the most powerful mantra in the universe. Om Namah Shivai. So recently, I, Sandra and I have been saying that mantra quite a lot more than usual. on our mala. Om Namah Shivai, Om Namah Shivai, Om Namah Shivai. We say that on our mantras. We take a walk, and say quite a few rounds. You feel uplifted, you feel cleaned out when you say that mantra. It's like a spiritual mental cleansing. You wouldn't think of going too long, more than a day, without taking a shower. So why do we go so long without giving our mind a cleansing. All the things we have to do during the day, little frictions, little conflicts build up, and we need to let go and cleanse our mind. This is one way to do it. This breathing you're doing right now. And sometimes you can sit 
or walk, get your mala, your 108 beads, and just recite Om Namah Shivaya. 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 Or you can say it even a little faster. Om Namah Shivaya. 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 That was 108 Om Namah Shivais. One round. One round. It's good to do 10 rounds, if you feel like it. Nothing is a penance in this work that we do. It's the means and also the end. It's the means to more joy, and it is the joy. So the key is your spiritual practices need to give you joy. It's not like a self, self-flagellation or a sacrifice or a penance or make yourself do it, no. You have to love to do it. <laughs> Who can't love to breathe? That's the, that's the easiest spiritual practice in the universe. Just take a breath. Feel the fullness of your breath coming into you. Your breath and the love of God are the same. There's a lesson in the Course in Miracles. I feel the love of God within me now. What better way to do that than through your breath? Babaji gave us this tool. He said to Sandra, it's the new Kriya Yoga. And then later on, he gave us the name Liberation Breathing.
This is a way of completing our karma in this lifetime. Getting into our heaven state. Lesson 138 says, heaven is the decision I must make. Our heaven is up to us, guys. Totally. My salvation comes from me, it says. And heaven is the decision I must make. Well, so if we're not happy, guess whose responsibility that is? Not your mates, not your parents. Not even God, really. It's your responsibility to line up with divine will that produces happiness. So ultimately, your happiness is your responsibility. This is one way. to speed up that process of undoing everything in yourself that's not happiness. Just breathe it out. Notice it in your mind, breathe it out. Notice it in your mind, oh, it may be a nagging thing from a long time, breathe it out. It's not God's will for you. Breathe it out. Notice it in your mind and breathe it out. Let it go. Relax into the space, into the emptiness where that thought or that concern is not bothering you. Notice it, breathe it out. Simple. It's not only the new Kriya Yoga, this breath work, but it'll, we always say it's not psychotherapy, it's spiritual purification, but it's 10 times more effective than psychotherapy because you're not only looking at the thoughts, but you're breathing out the negative charge from the cells. We store negative memories and those memories are also stored in the cells, not just in our brain. They're in every cell of our body. So when we're ready to let them go, these negative thoughts, any negative thought, about yourself, about a situation. When we're ready to breathe them out, let them go, we're cleansing our mind. It's spiritual purification. Entering that place in our mind that does not have a problem, no problem, no concern relaxed, safe, certain. This is wonderful. We're so glad to be doing these talks this way now. with you breathing while we're talking. I think it's better for you and better for us and it's delivering something actual. We're not just gonna talk about feeling safe. We're gonna experience it now, feeling safe. 
feeling relaxed, letting go, your peace is with me, father or mother, I am safe. I feel the love of God within me now. We're adding our energy to that for all of us here. There's 20 people here. So everyone is contributing in your breathing to everyone else's relaxation, peace, joy. That's great. Keep it up. Build the energy. I'm going to put on Om Namah Shivai and we'll breathe to this music for a little bit. Let's breathe to this Om Namah Shivai for 10 minutes.
start coming back into your body. I know you're probably way out there with that one. I know I, I always go way out listening to that. I think it's best if we just complete now and if you want to stay breathing just keep breathing and it's been wonderful being with you you can write to us and yeah this this mantra it's uh, it's actually on YouTube so you can get this great to be with you say your own Namashiva I'll tell you it's You'll get to the point where you can't wait to do it. It's so blissful to do that. Yeah.